good evening. Please stand this evening. That song's a more modern song, but I can imagine that it was birthed during that time between the Testaments, when there was no word from God. And they prayed, O come, O come, Emmanuel. But that last verse we sang says everything that is in our hearts at this time of the year. O come, desire of nations, Bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and quarrels cease and fill the whole world with heavenly peace. And the scripture tells us that we're to be at peace with all people so long as it depends on us. and to care for those around us and to do good. And first and foremost, towards those in the house of God. So I pray that we've come here tonight with hearts that are open to what God wants to speak to us tonight as we worship the birth of our Lord and Savior. Father God, we thank you for this time we thank you, Lord, that you are here among us, that we aren't waiting in darkness, that we aren't wondering, where are you, Lord? Where are you? For your word tells us that your spirit resides within each of us who have called you as Lord and Savior, and that you've given us everything we need to do as your words tell us to and as the words of this song talks about that we can be at peace with all peoples. We thank you, Father, 
for this blessed season that we celebrate. We thank you for your love, and your sacrifice. Lord Jesus, that you step down from your throne in heaven amongst the glory of the angels as they waited with bated breath to hear your cry. We thank you, Father, and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Angels sing.
to go back to that chorus, and we're going to do that again. But we did this Wednesday night, and we're going to do it a cappella. Because I can't hear you up here. I like to hear your voices. But I want this to be a worship time. So let's slow down just a little bit. And let's worship the newborn king. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We'll praise his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. Christ the Lord will give him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory. Christ the Lord for you alone are worthy for you alone are worthy for you alone are worthy Christ the Lord Amen you guys can sing Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. So it is good to be here. It's good to see each and every one of you. It's good to just worship the Lord, isn't it? And so you all was singing so good tonight. And so we're just, we're just expecting God to do something. Amen. We're not just here for a, a Saturday night service and Christmas Eve service. We're here to let God do what God wants to do. Amen. And so I trust that you will do that tonight. And and just let God have his way and, and do what he wants to do tonight. And it is awesome that, you know, we have the privilege to be able to uh, worship him on Christmas Eve and any time uh, that we can come together. And so as we prepare tonight to just share the word that God's given us tonight, I, I want to, I'm going to share with you one of the greatest stories that's ever been. One of the greatest stories that we've ever heard. It's a story of good news. Amen. How many likes good news? Amen. I, nobody likes to get that phone call and it's got bad news. It's a story of good news, and it doesn't need a great fanfare to make it any greater. It doesn't need to be plastered all over Facebook with everybody liking it to make it greater. You know, it seems like when you put something on Facebook, the more likes you get, the better the story gets. You know, it's just, it's like that. And so, there have been many great stories throughout history, but none as great or life-changing as the one you're going to hear tonight. And we've all heard this story before. And so, before you... Before you say, oh, I've heard that, you know, I've heard this story before, I want you to listen to what God has to say tonight. And I want you to just, just bear with this thing for just a minute. We'll get it. And uh, I want you to just take tonight in your mind, and even though you've heard the story before, I want you to listen to the story as if you're hearing it for the first time. I want you to just be like a child that's up on his edge of his seat and just listen to that, that story. You know, if you ever watch uh, Andy Griffin, when... Uh, 
Andy goes to tell a story to the kids, and, and Barney's just sitting there like this, listening like he'd never heard it before. And so that's how I want you to listen tonight, like you've never heard this before. It's, it's, a, it's the greatest story in history, and it's found in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. While you're finding us, just, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. And Father, we just love you tonight. We praise you. We exalt you. We thank you, God, that you are God of every situation, every circumstance. God, we thank you that you gave of yourself to be born of a virgin Mary. You left your splendor and your glory for us. And tonight, Lord, we, we just can't thank you enough. We can't worship you enough. We can't praise you enough for what you've done. But, Lord, tonight we celebrate what you did for us. We celebrate you giving up everything. And Lord, I just ask for your anointing tonight as I bring the message in the way that you've given it, Father, that it would be a message that as we hear it, we would understand this is a word for me tonight. And God, that we would hear the word, we would receive it, and then we would apply it into our life because God, every time a word comes forth, we can glean something out of it. And so Lord, I just thank you that we have the privilege to, to be here tonight. And may we never forget, Lord, that when we talk of your birth, it points to the cross, and the cross points to your soon coming again. Praise God. And so, Father, we just celebrate you tonight from beginning to end and return, and we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody got Luke chapter 1? I'm sorry, chapter 2? In the beginning, Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augusta that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Mary and Joseph head from Nazareth to Bethlehem to pay taxes. Registered means taxes. They had to pay their taxes. Now, we really don't think of this, but it was probably 80 to 100 miles from, for their trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And so they're on a donkey, and Mary is riding this donkey, so, you know, they could only make like maybe 8 to 10 miles a day. And we always think about, you know, okay, they went from here to here, and it was just a quick trip. It wasn't. Now, ladies, I don't know any of you who have been pregnant have ridden a donkey. I don't think you want to try that. But here she was pregnant. She was ready to, to about ready to deliver, and they're traveling 8 to 12 days, depending on how much they could go per day, you know, you've got to stop and eat and take care of things. And so here they, you know, they're, they're tired and they finally get there. It's just, it's, it's, it, it's as, as the, the trip took 8 to 12 days, they, they could only get there at nighttime because it was so long. They arrived in Bethlehem late in the evening and there was no place for them to stay. The city was full because people was gathered to pay their taxes. Can you imagine after riding on a donkey for 8 to 12 days, you're tired you're worn out. And then you, there's no place for you to stay. They tried to find a place to stay, but they, they were turned away. And finally, someone said, there's a cave down there, and it's, it's where the animals go and where they find shelter. You can go down there and stay. It's, it's an indention in the side of a cave. It's not the stable like we think it is, like we make it out to be, and it's okay that we do that. But it was probably a cave that they had to stay in. And so... As they did that, can you imagine Mary? She's probably, she's probably praying, dear God, please don't let this baby come here. Please don't let this happen here. Let us get back home to where mama's at. Let us get back home to where family's at. God, we're all alone here. Please don't let this baby come now. And they came into town that day, and it was very chaotic. Anybody know how tax day is? <laughs> it's crazy. If you're one of those that wait till the last day, it's really crazy. But it was tax season, so it was chaotic. People everywhere around the town overrun with people. And they were probably trying to sell things to pay the taxes. Anybody ever had to do that? Sell something to pay your taxes. And here were two young people in a strange town, alone, expecting a child. And they were already under a cloud of scandal. As Mary was pregnant, 
and they weren't married. Oh, their story was good. Their story was really good. Our relationship is pure. The Holy Spirit came up on Mary, and she conceived a child. Now, I understand that, and you understand that, but a lot of people didn't understand it. Yeah, right, right. Tell us another story. And so here was the scandal, the cloud that was up on them. And so can you imagine how people begin to talk? And here's Mary and Joseph, and they're tired. They're lonely. They just walked 8 to 12 days, and they just wanted to get it done and go home. Anybody ever been there? I just want to get done with what I got to do and go home. And then somewhere in the darkness of the night, it happened. A baby was born, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 9. A baby who would one day save us from our sins. Now, history tells us, if you take your Bible and you look at the end of Malachi, you'll probably have the end of, you'll have the, end of the Old Testament, then you'll probably have a blank page, and then it'll probably start, it should start, Matthew. But history tells us between Malachi and Matthew was 400 years. 400 years that God did not say one word. There was no prophetic word. There was no prophet appointed. There was nothing. There was no presence of God. There was nothing as said for 400 years. Can you imagine if we today waiting for God for 400 years to answer a prayer? You know, they, they may have thought, where's God? Has he, has he just forgot us? Is he dead? 400 years and not one thing from God. Nothing. Such. Not a voice. Nothing. Yes, the angel appeared later on, but in that 400 years, when God chose to speak again, he chose to speak in the cry of a baby. You say, now wait a minute. The angel appeared to Zacharias and to, to Mary. The angel appeared with a message, but God himself did not speak. God spoke when that baby cried. The first time in 400 years, the voice of God was heard, and it was the cry of the baby. You say, How, where do you get that? Turn to you look at John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word refers to Jesus. So we can look at this. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus. The Word, Jesus, was with God. And the Word, Jesus, was God. And then John 1, 14 says, and the Word, which is Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and he, Jesus, was full of grace and truth. 400 years of silence broken by the cry of a baby in the darkness of the night for all the word to, world to hear the good news. You know, I would have thought that if God was going to speak after 400 years, it would be some great big fanfare, that he would have made all his power and glory known so that all the world could hear. But he did. He made it known in the cry of a baby. And all the world can hear the good news today. Praise God. The silence was broken in the darkness of the night so that all the world could hear the good news. The good news is, say it with me, Jesus. Say it again, Jesus. Say it again, Jesus. It's kind of like a locomotive building up steam. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Man, that does something to my heart. That just makes my heart want to leap. 400 years, God was silent. And you know, that night, we, we sing Silent Night, and, and that's a beautiful song, but that night wasn't silent because Mary gave birth to a baby with no medication, nothing. And I'm sure she was in a lot of pain. And she was crying, maybe screaming, we don't know. But we know that when Jesus was born, Joseph gave him that name. As the angel said, his name will be Jesus. Glory to God. So as all that took place, and as Jesus was born and and darkness, had, or the light had stepped into the darkness. Let's look on in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 20. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. 
For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, I love that word, so you'll have to say that with me. Suddenly. And suddenly. you got to say suddenly. And suddenly. There we go. There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. The angels appeared to the shepherds to tell them the good news. And the angel said, fear not or do not be afraid. And when an angel would speak to a human, they would address them that way, first to get their attention so they wouldn't be afraid, and then to prepare them to receive the word that's about to come forth. You know, I think if I was there and an angel appeared and said, Fear not, I'd be saying, it. yeah, right. I think I'm going to be scared, scared here for a little bit. You know, it might have been a huge angel. It's probably Gabriel, probably a big angel. We don't know how big Gabriel was. You know, he could be six feet, he could be 20 feet. We don't know, but he's big. And so the angel said, fear not. The shepherds were considered unclean in those days because of their occupation. They weren't even allowed to go into the temple to worship. The angels appeared to them to let it be known that the good news, the good news was for everybody. It wasn't just for the high and mighty. It was for everybody. It was for the lonely. It was for the lowly. And the angel said, fear not, I bring you good news. For unto you a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. The 12 words that change history. 12 words that change lives and still change lives today. For unto you a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. The shepherds went to see what this good news was and what it was all about. And there they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. They had just witnessed prophecy being fulfilled. Right before their very eyes was God Almighty in the flesh. Glory to God. God Almighty in the form of a baby in the flesh. And when everyone saw this, they marveled. Luke chapter 2, verse 20 says, The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told by the angels. What a night. (laughs) What a night that the shepherds, the lowly occupation that they had, the lowly shepherds who weren't even allowed in the temple were the first ones who got to see God face to face in the flesh. Praise God. That's exciting. (laughs) That's exciting. And we see that Jesus came full of grace and glory. He came into a broken, hurting, dying, messed up world so that you and I can have peace. He came to bring forgiveness. He came to bring joy. He came to bring hope. He came to bring healing. He came to bring comfort. Anything you are struggling with that you are holding on to as a crutch, anything that you are holding on to as security, you won't let it go because it's, it's friendly to you. It's something that you're familiar with, and you know that it's dragging you down, and you know that it's tearing you apart, but you, you can't let go of it. Jesus came to take it away, and he came to take it away tonight in his name. Amen. Give him some praise and give him some glory. Those things that we hold on to so many times just beat us up and tear us apart, but Jesus came to set us free. How many remember the Charlie Brown Christmas story? I shared this Wednesday night. You remember the Charlie Brown Christmas story? They tried all through that to to be able to get Linus to get rid of his blanket. And he carried that blanket. He made it into a shepherd's hat and everything else. And he carried that blanket uh, through that mo- or through that program until he, he realized that that blanket was his strength. That blanket was his hope. It was his familiarity. It was his friend. He couldn't let go of it because it was his security. But then when Linus begins to tell the Christmas story, and he begins to read Luke chapter 2, and he says, fear not, boom, he drops that blanket. And he realizes 
that he didn't need that blanket anymore because Jesus was there for it. You say, preacher, you're watching too many cartoons. <laughs> A revelation from watching the cartoons not too long ago. And we see Linus tells that Christmas story so awesome. But he realizes he doesn't need the blanket. He doesn't need to be fearful anymore because Jesus came to take away the fear. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Man, anything you're dealing with, Jesus came to take it away. And he came again to take it tonight. What a story. A story of a virgin mother. A story of a man who could have put her away but and thought she uh, had committed adultery. But because of the obedience that they had for God, when the angel showed up to both of them and began to speak, they both said, we'll do this. I'm paraphrasing, okay? We'll do this. We'll do this. Mary, you know, pondered and, and questioned things. Why me? But then she said, I'll do this. I'll do your will. Joseph, the angel came to a dream, and when he woke up, he went and took Mary as his wife. And so they were obedient, and you and I need to learn to be obedient when God speaks to us. What a story. The 12 words of Christmas that changed the lives forever. For unto you a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. How many know the song, The 12 Days of Christmas? Anybody know it's on the first day of Christmas? Y'all know that? I don't know anybody that's got up to the, anywhere in that song and said, you know what, that changed my life. When I got those, I forgot the song. When I got those 12 calling birds, that never changed my life. But I know many people that said the 12 words of Christmas. For unto you a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. When they've heard those words, there's been something that's clicked and that's changed their whole life. The 12 words, they, the 12 words of Christmas. The greatest story ever told is that of Jesus leaving his home in glory with his father to be born of the Virgin Mary so that he could someday die on a cross that you and I might have our sins forgiven and have life and have it everlasting. He came as a baby in a manger. He died as a man on an old rugged cross. He resurrected from the dead as the second person of the Godhead, and he is returning as King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Praise God. He had a purpose when he was born. It was all to fulfill the master's plan. A man named Reginald Finnegan was an inventor for, Ein for Albert Einstein. He'd been working on a radio, on the AM radio, and he had developed it to where he could send out the Morse code, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash. And it was sent out to the ships way out in the water. And he'd been trying to boost the signal so voices could be heard on the radio. On Christmas Eve, 1906, he felt that he had accomplished that task. And so in the middle of the night, he began to speak into that radio. And the first words that were ever heard on AM radio was the reading of Luke chapter 2. Isn't that awesome? That the good news went forth on the radio. Can you imagine the captains of that ship when they've heard dot, 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 and all of a sudden a human's voice comes across that box, and it's good news. And it's the story of the, of the gospel of Jesus being born. The first thing ever heard on the AM radio was Luke chapter 2. And as he read Luke chapter 2 and the gospel went out across the airways, as he finished reading Luke chapter 2, he picked up his violin and he began to play, Oh, Holy Night, going out across the airways. And then he, as he played the last verse, he began to sing it. A lot of times we don't even sing the last verse of Oh, Holy Night, but listen to what it says. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall break from the slave. Chains he shall break for, for the slave is our brother. And in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine. O oh, night when Christ was born, O oh, night, O oh, night divine. Can you imagine hearing that across the airways? You've just heard the gospel story for the first time on the radio, and now you hear what a holy night it was. And it was a holy night in Bethlehem. It was a holy night with the glory and splendor of our Savior. That night a baby was held, but tonight 
That baby wants to hold you as a savior. He wants to meet you. He wants to wrap his arms around you. He wants to say, I love you. You see, some of you came here tonight, and it's been a really bad year. There's been so much that's happened that you just wonder, can I take any more? You know, you may have, you may have be here tonight, and it's your first Christmas without that loved one. It may be your second or third Christmas without him, and it hurts. But if this may be your first Christmas without a loved one, and you're struggling, wondering, can I get through this? It might be your first Christmas that you've been diagnosed with a serious health problem. And it might be your first, first Christmas that you've given in to the plans of Satan and you've got into addictions of all kinds. And it's killing you. And you know you need to stop, but you can't do it on your own. It may be that some of you are here tonight and you've got that little baby. It's the first year with that newborn. All parents know newborns are awesome, but there can be a lot of stress. <laughs> And you may just feel so overwhelmed by that little one. You're getting two and three hours of sleep at night, and you're so tired. You just need some encouragement. It might be your first Christmas that your life is so messed up that you feel like there is no hope. There's no hope. And it might be your first Christmas that the one that you love just walked out, and you still don't know why. You wish you did. But you don't know. Nothing makes sense. You knew that God put you together, and then the enemies come in to destroy. It might be your first Christmas without a job, and you just don't know how you're going to make it. I want you to know tonight that the baby that was born in the manger is the Savior who can take care of everything. He can restore joy. He can restore hope. He can restore peace. He can restore families. He can restore the addicts. He can comfort you in the loss of the loved one. Only Jesus could do something like that. I can't do it and he can't do it. But whatever is going on in your life, as I said a while ago, the baby that was held in the manger wants to hold you tonight. And his name is Jesus. What better night on Christmas Eve, December the 24th, 2016, then to turn it all over to our Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I can't handle it anymore. He wants to give you the good news tonight, and he wants to set you free. That's one of the greatest things that the Lord does is he sets us free. And when he sets us free from ourself, then we can begin to enjoy the blessings that God has because our self, a lot of times, causes us to miss those blessings. You know, I, I think about all the, the master plan that God had. Before there was anything, there was, there was nothing. And God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit began to have a conversation. He said, we're going to create a world for man to live in and then we're going to create man to take care of it in our own image and then I know that man's going to mess up and Jesus said well father I'll go and I'll humble myself I'll leave my surroundings of heaven and I'll leave you and I'll go and be born in the flesh so that they can have their sins forgiven and the Holy Spirit said well that's great but as you grow and you minister, there's going to come a time that you die. And the Holy Spirit says, I will go and give them strength. The Godhead three in one. Glory to God. God sent down as man. And the word became flesh. Jesus became flesh. He was the light of the world that stepped out into darkness. Would you stand with us tonight? And we're going to light a candle in just a moment. I want to pray as we prepare to do this. And we're going to worship as we sing this tonight. And TC's going to help light. And there's a... I thought I had another one. <laughs> oh, right there's another one. Just pass it, light them, and then pass them down. If you've got a lighter, go ahead and light it. And 
Father, we love you tonight and we praise you. We thank you that you gave it all up for us. And Father, may we never forget that love that you had to come in the, into the flesh, into a world that was hurting, messed up, sin sick. Father, all across this room here tonight, there's people with needs. Lives that are messed up, marriages that are messed up, kids that are messed up with addictions, people who are just stressed to the max, Lord, I ask that you would just meet every need and take everything away tonight, Lord, that you would have your way. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we light these tonight, we're going we're gonna to worship. And I ask you if, if our leaders of the church that are always up here to pray, if you guys would just come up and help me tonight. If you need to pray as we sing this tonight, they're up here to sing, to pray with you. They're up here to minister to you. And so I just ask you in these last few moments that you worship as we sing this song. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. If God spoke to you tonight and you're here and He spoke to you, 
I just ask that you would take to heart to the things that you felt in your heart tonight and pray about it and let God change you for his glory. Amen. TC, you. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight to worship the birth of our Lord and Savior this eve, the eve before he arrived to be the light of the world. And as we stand, preparing our hearts to close out this service, we want to continue to carry Take the joy of the Lord in our heart as we leave here tonight. I invite you back tomorrow morning at 1030 for worship. I know this is a busy time. Wherever you are, whatever your plans are for tomorrow, Christmas Day, celebrate Jesus. I know you will be with family and you will open gifts and exchange gifts and you will share the love of Christ with one another. But Make sure you take time to thank him for coming. Thank him for being born and dying for our sins. And then share the love of Christ with your family like you've never, ever loved before because we can't take each other for granted. I just came back from Kokomo, Indiana tonight, right before service. I hadn't seen my family in 44 years and God reunited us this year and this was my first Christmas with them. It was only for some hours, but it filled my heart with joy that I have been longing for for the last 44 years. And so it was an outpouring. I am filled with love and joy tonight. Don't take one another for granted. Appreciate each other. Love each other as you celebrate the birth of our Savior. I just want to pray for you tonight. Bow your head with me. Father, in Jesus' name, we come as the body of Christ joined together in your love, the love you gave us the love you demonstrated on Calvary's cross. Father, we're united together as one. And I pray your blessing upon each soul here tonight that they will always share your love with their family and friends and those that you bring across their path. There's people who are hurting and they're lost. And if nothing else, we can just say, I love you to them. Smile at them. Be kind to them, and that will give them joy that they've been longing for and missing for a long time. I pray that we can celebrate the birth of our Savior in a way that we've never celebrated before, and we will never take our salvation for granted. Father, we love you, and we thank you for the gift you gave us. We thank you for the birth of our Savior. As we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Christmas tonight. Bless my brothers and sisters as they leave this place, but never your presence. Go with them with traveling grace and mercy and bring them back to worship you here tomorrow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.